Welcome to part two of chapter three, animating objects. In this video, we're gonna be doing the brick. Before we get into animation though, let's take about two or three minutes to do a checklist to make sure our rig for our brick is set up correctly. I'll be doing this at the beginning of every video. I don't want you guys to start off animating at a handicap with some parts of your rig maybe, you know, messed up, broken, whatnot. So let's just quickly go through a little checklist to make sure our brick rig is set up correctly. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to hop down this hierarchy of my brick rig. So the last thing we did when we rigged it was grouped all the uh, handles together and just called it brick rig 001. And if we expand this, our next uh, object in our hierarchy here is my translate handle 001. All right, that's right under brick rig. And let's make sure that we can grab the handle Let's make sure everything is zeroed out and locked. We want to keep the translations unlocked, rotates and scales we want to keep locked. All right, so zeroed out. Looks like it's in a pretty good position right in the center of my brick. All right, let's go to our rotate handle. Zeros, ones, rotate is unlocked, translate and scale is locked. I can grab it with no uh, issue and it looks like it's pretty much centered around my brick. All right, great. All right, and let's go and grab my scale handle now. That's that inner little hoop I got going on. Um, everything's locked out, zeros and ones. Everything looks good. And then let's check my brick out. It's all zeroed out and it's all locked out. So we can't animate my brick at all. I also have my brick on its own object layer. So I can hide my brick or lock it. The reason I put my brick on a different layer rather than other than uh, my bricks on a, the object layer and my curves are on the brick layer. The reason I can do this is I do this is when I unlock my object layer, I now have the chance of accidentally selecting my brick. If I put a brick on a different layer, I can lock my brick down while keep uh, keep my selection of my handles available. So I can select my handles and everything's good. All right, great. So the checklist is done. We can now start animating. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do some prep work for the time slider now. I know that I probably want to work, have probably more time than 48 seconds. So I'm going to go to my maximum time slider length here, the end time of my animation. And I'm going to set this to something like, um, I don't know, let's do, I don't know, 200 just for right now. Uh, that'll give me a little bit of breathing room to work with. And typically in big scenes, you would want to start animating on frame 100. That'll give you 100 extra frames to animate on the back of, in case you need to do a few little bit of animation at the beginning of your time slider. But we're not going to worry with that. We'll just start on frame 1 to keep things simple. So the first thing I need to do is I need to pick how, t how high up my brick's going to be when I drop it. So let's do this. Let's grab our translate handle. I'm going to get my move tool and I'm going to drop it up from about right there. That'll be, that'll be just fine. So with my time slider on one, my brick at the height I want it to drop from, I'm going to hit S on my keyboard and make a little keyframe right there. Notice how whenever I make my S, the only things that are locked right here are my uh, translate values and my visibility. Since rotate and scale are locked, they do not get a time frame. Alright, that's great. So let's drop it and see, let's see. And this is a part where you're going to kind of have to guess. My computer lagged up. I kind of guess about how many seconds it might take for this brick to fall from here to the ground uh, and make it look believable. But I'm going to do it at about frame 12. Alright make sure that you position your brick to the ground that might be helpful huh and I'm gonna put it right there I'm not gonna put it directly on the ground because as it's falling I want my brick to kinda of rotate and hit like on a corner alright so from one frame 1 to 12 I have my brick moving now and let's just check my animation preferences and make sure I'm in real time real time 24 frames per second perfect so now Hmm. 
I think it might be a little bit slow. So what we can do now is we can go to our window and I'm going to go to my dope sheet. Window animation editors dope sheet. And I'm just going to have my translation handle selected. I'm going to left click and drag on that end time uh, keyframe right here. And I'm going to middle mouse button click and hold and drag it back two frames. Now I'm on frame 10. Let's see what happens now. I kind of like that better. You know what? I'm also going to raise the height of the brick. All right. That looks pretty good. I'll go from here. It's a good place to start anyway, right? So what we're going to do now is I'm going to maybe put a little bit of rotation in it now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to frame 1 and I'm going to grab my rotation handle and notice I have no keyframes for my rotation so I'm just going to go ahead and keyframe it at a neutral position. I'm going to go to frame 10 now and keyframe it or and rotate it in a way where it actually makes contact with the ground and you really want to mimic the physical real world properties of this brick as much as possible so if you have this brick hitting right there I want to try to rotate it where I can get an edge hitting on this plane as close as possible alright so now my brick kinda of takes a nose dive boom, and hits the ground alright great Doom. Mm, very good. So now we need to uh, do a few more animations of the brick bouncing up a little bit, settling, you know, doing some ins and outs, making it look like the brick is going to bounce. The brick will bounce a little bit. It won't bounce as much as a ball, but it needs to settle. All that kinetic energy that's stored from the height of the fall, it's building up energy in the form of gravitational acceleration so all this energy needs to be released and it does so by bouncing around just a little bit so what we're gonna do we're gonna come up maybe three frames and we're gonna grab my rotation ha or translate handle and we're just gonna have him bounce up just a little bit okay and I wanna go use the uh, go ahead animation technique where I just kind of go ahead with the animation and just wing it so I'm gonna have him kinda rotate a little bit Alright, maybe come back down. He was already kind of rotating like that. So let me keep on the theme. You know what? I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete this last rotation keyframe. Before I do that, let me, uh, let me get my bounces down. Alright, so I have it landing, bouncing up, coming back down again. And I'm going to grab my rotation handle this time. And I made this rotation handle on frame 13. I'm going to right click and delete it. Because now, whenever it comes back down, I can just go ahead and assume that when it comes back down, it's going to rotate like this. That looks good to me. So now Maya fixes the kind of weird little jump it does and kind of does the in between work for me. So let's look at it. Boom. And I kind of got to see if the motion that it was doing beforehand, the rotation it was doing, it looks like it was just kind of taking a nose dive, maybe leaning to this side a little bit, like leaning like that. So maybe whenever it bounces back up, maybe it needs to bounce the other direction a little bit. Again, it kind of needs like a counter bounce. So before it was bouncing like this, now it's going to be landing on this corner. Boom. Boom. And we're going to need probably one more bounce up. So let's grab our translation. See, boom, landing, settling. And then our next bounce is going to be half the height of the previous one because that kinetic energy is starting to run out, right? And then maybe, maybe I'll just go ahead and let it land flat. Yeah.
I might have to go back in and adjust that when I put the rotation in. So let's grab my rotation handle now and see if we can't get it, the brake kind of landing nice and easy. Maybe rotate it just a little bit. All right. Have it kind of settle down right there. Boom. As you can see, the keyframes on my time slider, I have a translation value at 22, but my rotation value is at 23. So what we can do is, I can just left click on the time slider, and I drag a little bar around it, left click, shift, click, my bad, hold down shift, left click, and drag this red bar. Then you can use these little arrows to kind of move it around a little bit. It's kind of a quick way to do dope sheet work. That's what I like doing. All right, so let's look and see what we got. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see if that looks natural. So it comes down, lands, hits that corner. You know what? I think whenever it bounces back up, since it hits this corner right here, I think it's going to kick up a little bit. Maybe kick up in between these two frames. Kick up. And it'll probably land on that side a little bit. Looks like I need to change my translate value now. I need to bring it up just a little bit. see what it just looks like in real time real quick alright so that little rotation at the end doesn't look quite natural see how it goes by this point in the uh, animation cycle it shouldn't be able to move that much because the the energy built up from the uh, fall should be running out so I need to rethink this keyframe right here. Let me zoom in on it. Maybe I'll just have it settle. Maybe just have it finally run out of a little steam right there. Boom. Okay. Some tweaks there, put a tweak there. You know what? I think it bounces up too high that second bounce. It bounces up. Uh, it does have the height. Boom. Boom. That lands there lands on that edge again. I'd like it to land maybe on this edge now as it settles. See, it's just a lot of tweaking. So I'm going to have it land on the opposite edge of the brick now. Boom, 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 boom. Bounces up, comes down, kicks back up a little bit and then this is be my last settle movement what I need to do is I need to come up just just a fraction and then just come back down a little bit let's adjust my rotations so this is when the brick's coming to a full dead stop finally. Put a little bit of a twist on it. Try to get it as flat as possible. Let's see what happens. I think I got a little too much bounce in my ball or my brick. It might be a little too slow too. 
I gotta self critique this. You gotta be really critical. Hmm. I'm looking at it. I think it's a little too. It reminds me a little too bouncy. If you ever find yourself looking at this an animation on loop, and you're like, "What is wrong with this? What is going on?" Well, don't try to just hone in on the few things like, "Is my translate too tall there? Is my scale not working? Am I rotating wrong?" Just forget all these handles. Just look at the object. Just pretend the. Just look at the object like it, you would in real life. Just look at the brick. And right now, when I'm just looking at the brick, it looks like it's made a little too, like out of rubber or something, like it's too bouncy. So, I've concluded that I don't like the way my brick bounces, so i got to figure out a way where I can fix that. And I think the reason it's too bouncy is because I think it bounces up too high when it lands. I think that's way too high for it to bounce up. So if we just make it just a really short hop, Maybe shorten our hops a little bit each time it comes up. See what see what that does. So I just shortened the height of each bounce when it came. All right, that little rotation at the end where it settles down. Now that's looking a little off. Boom, boom. So it hits. Maybe I need to scrub this rotation a little bit forward. And don't forget to look at it from far away. I think that's looking pretty good. I think I could probably make the whole thing a little bit faster though. I think my timing is just a little slow. So I think if we fix the timing, <coughs> we can call this brick animation pretty much done. All right, great. Yeah, I'm going to Sorry, I was just looking at it, zoned out. All right. So let's open up my dope sheet again and let's see what we can do. So what I'm going to do on the dope sheet, I'm going to select my translate and rotate handles. So I go to my outliner, I hold down control so I can select two things at once. Or you can just select your translate handle and expand. And it gets a little messy, but that's okay. What I like doing, I just like to go to my outliner, I'll grab my translate, I'll hold down control. So I can click my rotate. Now I have my rotate and translate on my dope sheet. So now I can just focus in on kind of making this a little bit shorter. So maybe, and it's really just small tweaks. Let's see what happens now. See, it's just a small tweak. I just move maybe two blocks of keyframes closer together to make it fast, remember? I like that. It looks like my brick has weight. I'm adjusting for forces and counter forces. So let's break down what I've done. I started out by putting the brick up here and then add a little spice. I rotated the brick down so it would land on the front left corner. So when it lands, he's taking a nosedive pretty seriously. So he kind of lands to the left a little bit, really subtly. So I kind of have him bounce the other way a little bit. So now I have him kind of land flat on the t front right corner. So that's going to kind of make him kick back up. Now he's going to land on this other side here. Settles there. And it is just run out, of out of, it's run out of energy right now. So now it's ready just to settle down and go to sleep. So it's just not, there's no formula here. Animation is very organic. I kind of have an idea of where I want to go with it, but it's almost like the decision I made uh, 10 seconds ago, like to have it land on that front corner like that. It dictated 
where the animation would go from there. And you can do freeform animation like that. Just do it like, because, you know, bricks falling is pretty random, so you can do some random animation like that. But it's always got to make sense in the physical real world and the real world. All right. All right, great. You know what? I'm going to look at this translate bounce up real quick. Hmm. I'm going to shorten it just a little bit. Hmm. Nope, that didn't work out too well. Okay, lands. Let's see what happens now with that little tweak I did. Alright, you can definitely add some flair and play around with it. But I'm just giving you a basic little rundown on how to get the most basic kind of reaction uh, forces that would be going on. And my brick's heavy and solid, so it's not going to bounce. It's just going to kind of wobble around on the ground, getting rid of that built-up kinetic energy, remember. And there's not going to really be too much squash and stretch. Um, I can add squash and stretch, so if I go to my scale tool right here, as it lands, I can squash it a little bit. And that'll require me to kind of tweak my translate there. And what I need to do is I need to set a keyframe at the very beginning at its normal size here. And then if I don't set another keyframe before frame 10 where I made that squash happen, it's going to start shrinking in the midair. So I need to start at frame 1 and I'm going to middle mouse click and drag to like frame 7. So it preserves the mass from frame 1 to 7. It's only not until uh, my computer's running a little slow. It's almost not until uh, frame 10 that we get to see, you know, the squash actually happen. Alright, there we go. So, with that in mind, you gotta be really careful about how you, uh, my computer's freaking out. Okay, it's back. You gotta be careful how you pan out these squashes and stretches. Because you can have the thing just stretching and moving and doing all kind of crazy stuff. But, that's kind of just a warm up. I'm going to take away all the squash on this brick. I don't want it to be too exaggerated. So I just want my brick to have a lot of gravity, a lot of weight. It's not going to be bouncing around. It's just going to thud on the ground. All right, great. So I think that'll about do it for the brick. See, it lands and then it just thuds. All right, great. So that does it for this chapter. Um, next chapter, we'll go to the ball and have it bounce and squash and do all that good stuff, too. Uh, I want to keep these animations really basic and simple. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on them. I want you to experiment with adding a little bit more of your own twist to things. Uh, by all means, if you're um, you know, having a little bit of issue with getting things just right, you can copy these step by step. That'll teach you, you know, you get a feel for it that way. But if you want to uh, experiment and do some crazier animations, like the brick spinning really fast as it lands and, like, hits here and just goes and runs right there, by all means, go ahead. But make sure it looks good. Um, just because you try something hard and fail at it doesn't mean you're going to get, you know, it doesn't mean you're going to learn anything from it. It doesn't mean you're going to get a better grade. Uh, grades are secondary. If you're not learning the core concepts, then that's really where the problem is. So I'll quit rambling now so we can go on to our next uh, animation with our ball bounce. Probably the funnest one to do. All right, thanks, guys.